My Gaming Edge. Hey guys, it's Clockwork from Team EMG, and I'm here with my first MG video. I'm going to use my first video to go over the basics of Scout, what you'll be running into if you decide to play this game at a competitive level. Um, I see questions all the time, such as what sensitivity should I use? How do I hit scouts? You know, what, what movement should I use? How do I improve my movement? And um, hopefully after this video, all those questions will be answered. Alright, so uh, I'm just running around my own server on Badlands right now. And um, I'm going to tackle the sensitivity issue. Uh, most players, most any player in this game really, it would be, it's advantageous to use a pretty high, sen not a high sensitivity, but a sensitivity that doesn't inhibit your ability to like turn around and, you know, shoot shit behind you. It's, uh, it's pretty important to be able to, you know, look, do a 180 really fast and shoot something, look around you because there's always going to be like a soldier above or something below. Um, and you really suffer if you use a sensitivity that's too low, because um, it, it's really hard to hit scouts, especially up close. If you know your sensitivity is too low and the scout is running left and right, it feels like he's like running a fucking marathon. So um, <coughs> I'm gonna have to say that most scouts in this game would probably use a sensitivity that ranges from uh, from 7 inches for a 360 to probably like 14 inches for a 360. If you're not uh, familiar with that term, it's just um, it's the amount of inches that your mouse moves on your mouse pad to do a 360 in-game. So, like, that was about 9-ish inches. Um, you don't want to use too high of a sensitivity as Scout, because if you do you know, your shots are definitely going to suffer from any range, even close range. You're probably going to suffer if you have a, a higher sensitivity. Unless you jump around the scout a lot, it makes it a lot easier if you have a high sensitivity and you jump, try to jump over his head or and whatnot. But that's definitely not a good uh, good idea to want to have to uh, resort to. So the first deathmatching tip I'm going to give you guys is um, in the realm of Scout v. Scout. Uh, Scout v. Scout is typically going to be the most common 1v1 you run into in TF2. Um, while you might spend some mid-fights shooting soldiers and demo men and whatnot, whenever you run into the only other person alive on the team, it'll usually be a scout, if not a roaming soldier, but typically a scout. And um, Scout, I find many scouts ask you know better players how they hit scouts because it seems to be the hardest class to hit in the game for some people so um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to be more consistent with your shots on scout because if you get to kill scouts quickly and you learn how to do it efficiently it'll probably be the most important aspect of your game because if you can wipe both of their scouts then the flank is completely open and your team can push to the next point. So I'm here in MGE with Sizer. Demo's paused. And uh, I just told him to strafe back and forth so I could tell you guys how to tackle a scout. So when he strafes to the right, you want to strafe to the left. You want to pretty much mirror what he's doing. You don't want to strafe to the right when he strafes to the right because then you have to move your crosshair more to the left than you normally would have to. Um, the hardest part about scout probably in that aspect is you know messing up your own aim with your strafe. You don't want to do that because a lot of scouts do that and that's how they miss so many shots. They'll strafe to the right, their opponent will strafe to the right, and then they'll have to swing their mouse all the way to the left to hit the scout. So what you want to do, then we'll resume, is uh, you pretty much just want to mirror what he's doing. So I told Sizer to strafe back and forth and here I am trying to mirror what he's doing. So notice when he goes to the left, I try to go to the left. When he goes, or rather to the right, when he goes to the right, I try to go to the left, and uh, it helps 
hit much more consistent shots than um than otherwise. So uh so now I'm gonna use examples of when we're actually playing. So uh demo resumed. Notice I go to him instead of actually going away from him. You know, it's a thousand times easier. Another aspect of scout I want to get across is um is learning how to dodge when you're kind of getting outplayed. So uh, when you're kind of getting outplayed, what you want to do is you want to jump around. You want to like try to fake them out, see if there's an, uh, a teammate by you, tell him to come help you, try to get any advantage you can by making him miss his shots. So uh, so demo resume. Notice uh, I see him kind of getting shit on. So I just start jumping around. And it's a thousand times more difficult for him to hit me. I'm trying to just buy time, and I actually managed to get the kill on him after just jumping around recklessly. Uh, it's actually pretty hard as a scout to be able to um, to track that movement in the air because uh, you know characters in or models, I guess, in TF2 don't actually have like the smoothest transition in the air. So it's actually pretty hard to hit them sometimes. So you could use that to your advantage as much as you want to. Uh, here are some more examples of the strategies I was talking about. Uh, he hits me two good shots, so I'm left to only jump around and try to dodge him. I don't hit many shots, but I do get to finish him off in the end because he couldn't hit me either. Uh, what happens next is a perfect example of the strafing. He strafes him to me left, I hit him, and he shifts him to me right, and I hit him. Uh, it's almost as if like the scouts run straight into your strafe, which is actually a very efficient way of playing scout v scout. Uh, On to the soldier segment. Before I show you guys any actual videos of Scout v Soldier, I want to get a few points across. You don't really want to attack a soldier as a scout on the flank when he sees you. Uh, if he sees you in like an enclosed area, like let's say the left side of Granary 2, Garage, whatever you want to call it, he will probably kill you, almost definitely kill you with no serious damage given unless you can run straight into him and hit him with a meat shot. Uh, which isn't always, you know, a guaranteed thing. Um, so that being said, when you actually attack a soldier who isn't on the flank, let's say a 1v1, you want to use your jump as an advantage. Soldiers hate scouts that jump all over the place. If you can use his rocket to surf, if you could jump over his head, whatever you need to do to make his rockets less accurate, you should do it. Okay, so demo resume. I'm here with Tyrone. I'm able to jump off of his rocket. Uh, we both missed a few shots, but I'm able to finish him off because he wasn't able to hit that other rocket that would be guaranteed pretty much if I were on the ground. One surefire way to kill a soldier is to get the height advantage. Now, I'm playing Tyrone on Badlands Middle in MG, so it isn't exactly the best example of getting height advantage, but it works out in this case anyway. Uh, it's not the best example because soldiers can actually hit you from a pretty low point when you're sitting up on top of the crate on Badlands Middle. You can pretty much shoot the ground and if you're, more, if you're enough to the side of the crate then it's going to hit you for like 60 damage, which is a little ridiculous, but whatever. Uh, so demo resume. I'm on top of the crate. Uh, Tyrone is forced to use shotgun because he doesn't want to risk using uh, rockets and giving me a free shot. And I'm able to kill him with one health left. Get shit on. My last tip about fighting soldiers is um, to actually run into them. They, a lot of them don't expect you to be so foolhardy and if you execute it properly then they're gonna die either from self damage or from bouncing off of you with a rocket or whatever. So don't resume. Uh, I run at Tyrone. I juggle him in the air and he doesn't even get a chance to shoot me. Again, I run into him, he reflects off of me with his own rocket, and I'm able to shoot him in the air and kill him. My final tip for combat classes in TF2 is for the demo man. Demo men are very easy to take down a scout if they don't see you. It's just a matter of running up to them and two-shotting them. If they do see you, however, it's a matter of finding an opening by baiting their stickies, getting in close, and then tricking them into missing all their pipes while you shoot them. Uh, while you find that opening, while you get closer, you should shoot some good shots at them. They have a pretty wide model and it's easy to do some major damage from far away. Um, 
once you get in close, it's a matter of uh, strafing back and forth very quickly, jumping over their head, doing anything that is difficult to predict. Don't run in a straight line because once you run in a straight line, they could either pipe you once or twice or shoot you with a sticky and kill you. So just make sure that you are unpredictable. Okay, in my example, I'm going to be playing Banny in MG. Uh, Granary middle. I have to get close to him. I'm not going to stay far away because if I do, I get hit by pipes. So, resume demo. Bandy's trying to hit me with a pipe. I'm slowly moving in close to him while hitting him with pretty meaty shots from far away. Again, I spot Bandy. I try to get close. I don't want him to get far away from me. And I just pepper him and shoot him and kill him. This next example is a good example of baiting his stickies and just getting in close. Uh, resume demo, I see Banny, he's shooting stickies, I'm dodging them, getting in close, and then I start double jumping so that he can't hit me, and I get a bunch of good shots on him and he does. Alright guys, that's it for my first MG video. I just wanted to start out with the basics. I hope you guys understood it. I tried to use pretty simple examples, but you know, you never know. If you don't get it, just ask. Alright, cool, later.